Believe it or believe it not. <laughs> Girls, be warned. Kiddies and cream buns. That's what happened. You know oil painting yourself. But you didn't marry me because I was an oil painting, my love. Whereas, oh, that was the whole point of you. <laughs> Go on, give us a smile, love. Oh, it looks like we have a decision. <laughs> In third place, Sandra Holt. <laughs> Applause, please, for our runner-up. Oh, uh, hopefully she won't be running anywhere in those heels. <laughs> Janice Oldstrop. <laughs> well done, well Janice. <laughs> and now the moment we've all been waiting for. <clears throat> oh, cracky, Mr Parker. It's down to the wire. Hold your nerve, Aidan, hold your nerve. In first place. The Belle of Blackpool, 1964, is Barbara Parker. Well done, love. <laughs> Len Phillips, Evening Gazette. So, are we the immediate family? I'm her father, George Parker. P-A-R-K-E-R. I'm related to, thank you very much. Oh. Who's this, then? The Queen Mother? I am <laughs> certainly not her mother. I'm her Aunt Mary. And this young book is Aidan? Barbara's fiancé. Oh, I won't write that. I'm going to break the art of every lad in Blackpool. I am here, if you want to ask me anything. No, thanks. I'll just make the rest up. Right, then. Out of the way, let's go for the money shot. Sing your chest out, love. You could be a glamour girl. The next Sabrina. Oh, come on out, Barbara. Take cheese. I sometimes shout out knickers, just to shake things up. <laughs> You'll have to get used to my colourful sense of humour. Opening supermarkets, hospitals, dog shows. We're going to have a very busy year. Goodbye to you was the toughest thing I've done since learning long division. But I had to go. It's now or never. Tell Aidan he's got full permission to hate me. 
But I've got this feeling in me gut that life's got something more in store for me than being Miss Blackburn Bell. And now's my chance to find out what. Dad, it's soft to say I love you, so I won't. But I do. I'll write as soon as I'm settled. Bright lights, here I come. Good morning, madam. Good morning. <laughs> Mother of the bride, is it? Uh, well, uh, perhaps this hat might suit Madame better. I like this one. What do you think? Have you ever seen a dead badger on the side of the road? I beg your pardon? Well, you did ask. She did ask, didn't she? Is there a problem, Barbara? No, no, Miss Sykes. I, I was just explaining to Madame that this hat makes... Her head look a little bit like, um... Roadkill. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry, madam. She's from up north. I was just being honest. Honest? Honest? The only honest opinion madam requires is to be told that the hat, any hat, looks absolutely... Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Sorry, Miss Sykes, it won't happen again. <laughs> Whoa, hazard warning. That chicken sandwich has been there like two weeks. Oh, it smells a bit ripe. Ripe? Surprised it hasn't grown legs and run out clucking. <laughs> Marjorie, shoes. Barbara, hats. They are. Yeah, of Thanks. course you've got a face for hats. Oh, you ain't seen me in a bubble hat. I look like a boiled egg in a tea cosy. Oh, my love. So, do you know this lot then? No, not personally. I can tell which departments they work in, though, just by looking at them. Starting at the top. Of the building? Of the league table. There you go, Mark. Cheers, Julie. Now, over here, we've got Ladies Fashion and Couture, first division. They all went to Lucy Clayton Robinson School. They all talk posh. They all walk like they've got a stick up their arse. Never seen one of them eat. Perhaps they shovel down the pies when they get home. Oh, no, they don't go home. No. They party all night with pop stars. <gasps> See the redhead? Yeah. She went on a date with a beetle. No. Yeah? <gasps> it's just the drama, though, so. Next floor down, you've got makeup. So you can be pretty and, like, short, but you can't have wonky teeth. Well, no. Who wants to buy lippy off someone with a gob like Ken Dodd? Now, over here we've got perfume. Law unto themselves, that lot. What do you mean? Well, men come in to buy gifts for their ladies, yeah? They ask the girls to spritz it on themselves so they can smell it. That's Millie. So Ron Geezer sniffed all the way up to her armpit, and then he gave it a lick. Mm. And that's you. And hats. So what are we in hats? bottom of the league table. No, no, that's us. In shoes. Whoops, sorry. Now, you'll find us in the basement. Just follow the cheesy pong. Thanks for the rundown, Marjorie. Hey, uh, it's Marge. If you want. Marge. Where are you living, then? Bed and breakfast. Just moved down from Blackpool. Blackpool? Mm -hmm. That why you talk funny? From where I'm standing, you're the one who talks funny. Uh, I'm from Croydon. We all sound like this. See ya. Hey, look, um, I, I've got a room in Earl's Court. Good for you. What? No, I'm, I mean, you can move in if you like. I'm looking for a flatmate, so. Okay.
right? You got so much stuff. It's mainly oh. hairspray. Okay. You coming? Yeah. Girls, this is Barbara. Hiya. Hi. Right. Only one more flight. You said that three flights ago. to Maison Alamage. Kitchen's just there. This is the bedroom. That's my bed. This is your bed here, by the window. I can't sleep in a draft because of my adenoids. Mayday, mayday. London calling. It's groovy here, Dad. I've landed on my feet in a swanky penthouse flat. By night, you'll find me enjoying cocktails and witty repartee. By day, I've got a job in the West End, giving high-class ladies expert advice on fancy hats. Absolutely perfect. It's a bit different to rolling sticks of rock, although I sometimes miss the heady pong of sugar up my nose. Say hello to Auntie Mary and tell her I've still got ideas above me station. You never know, I could be the biggest thing to come out of Blackpool since you know who. And the you know what. Big kiss, Dad. Ying Tong Ed Lai Po. Hello, friends. I'm your body meter Benjamin girl. Are you tired, run down, listless? Do you poop out at parties? Are you unpopular? The answer to all your problems is in this little bottle. A uh, little bottle. <laughs> <laughs> God, I haven't missed it. Oh, what are we having for our tea tonight? Oh, it depends what you're cooking. Marge, will you stop using your best saucepan to boil your pants? Uh, well, how else am I meant to get the stains out? I've just spent an hour at the laundrette. Why didn't you come? I don't want strangers just staring at me knick-knocks. At least I caught a bit of Lucille Ball. Oof. So that was a bonus. Hey, maybe we should get a telly. Uh, I'm not watching that. I love Lucy, lady. She gets me all wound up, pulling funny faces and falling on her backside. What kind of job is that? That's worse than working in shoes. I'd love to get paid to look about. What, on the telly? Yeah, why not? You want to be an actress? Well, maybe. I don't know. My dad says that actresses are no better than common prostitutes. Is your dad a vicar from Victorian times? No. He works at the car plant. Oh, oh. bloody hell. Oh. Never mind a telly. We haven't even got enough money to pay the meter. Hey, give me some change. I splashed out on the tumble dryer. Mm. What can you oh. do now? Oh, hang on. It's just start. The Oscar Squad is written by Bill Gardner and Tony Holmes. And produced and produced by Dennis Lindgren. Dennis Lindgren. Yep, it's mine. It's played by... Richardson. Excuse me, but who's in charge here? You are. I've got a family of six arriving from Glasgow tomorrow. I haven't got time to be cooking and cleaning up after you. Oh, my, just leave it. You know, go and see to your guests at Seagull's Hall. Nook, Seagull's Nook. And you'll do your washing and run a vacuum round too, will you? <laughs> like to see that. Yeah, well, well, you can't. i just do it later. Just leave it. It may have escaped your notice, but she's the same age as her mother when she left. She's not going to disappear like Gloria. She just needs to spread her wings, that's all. Oh, that won't be all she's spreading if she's not careful. Mary, please. She, she can handle herself. Listen, just because we didn't get any chances doesn't mean to say she shouldn't. You made her think she's something special. But she is. And now she's swung off to London. That? Like, like, she's above the lot of us. But she doesn't mean it like that. So what was wrong with Aidan? I was in there for sausage this morning. I was mortified. If she played her cards right, she could have been betrothed to the best-looking butcher in Blackpool. Well... Keep out of this private, private. <laughs> so, sorry, I didn't realise it was private. Excuse me, yeah. but who's in charge here? <laughs> you are! You can't decide what you want to do. Absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. 
I love it. How do I get from this to this? I could always apply for a promotion to the perfume counter. I really saw um, Jimmy Tarbuck in the London Palladium. Blimey. Do they get paid loads more in perfume? Don't be a twerp. She ain't got money for a ticket. A gentleman friend has. All the girls on perfume get taken to shows by gentlemen friends. You'd have no trouble reeling one in. Barb, oh, darling, thanks so much for this. No problem. I'm gonna pop to the clinic for some clap cream. Yeah. He looks like he might be on the prowl. Come on, Bob, darling, give him an eyeful. Do you know what Marilyn Monroe said when she was asked what she wore in bed? No. Chanel number no. five. Huh? She'd have got terrible chill blains on a nippy night in Norbrek. Barbara, dear. <gasps> I wasn't aware you'd been transferred to Arthur. Yep, temporarily. Uh, Millie had to pop to the clinic. What for? Clap. Ping. Clap, clap, clapping cream. Uh, she, 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 oh, she can't clap because her hands are red raw. A terrible affliction, can't clap. Uh, you were recommending this? Yes. It's a lovely eau de toilet. Toilet. That's the one. Well, uh, I'd like to see how it smells. Of course. Allow me. Where's this Valentine Law's fella taking you then? We're going to see Matt Monroe at the Talk of the Town. Mm -hmm. <laughs> fancy pants. Next time I'll ask if he's got a friend. What type do you fancy? Mm -hmm. What type? Get off! Get off! <laughs> what are you going to wear then? Me smart dress. Oh, nice. If you're going to a funeral, have you not got anything sparkly? Close your eyes. Oh, <coughs> my God. Where, where did you get that? It was my mum's. She loved a bit of ballroom back in the day, so I'm told. What do you reckon? You look like an explosion at a tinsel factory. <laughs> oh. Well, what am I going to wear, then? You leave this one to me. I usually flush them down the lav, but occasionally they come in handy. You look ravishing.
Campari and soda for the lady. Oh, do I drink it or gargle it? Come here often, do you? Well, let's just say I have the occasional business rendezvous. And what do you do after you've done your business? Beg your pardon. Oh, sorry, that sounded wrong. Um, I meant after the show. Do you go backstage and mingle with the stars or have a cocktail? Oh, don't you worry. I have plans for us later. <sighs> Valentine! Is that you? Sydney. And your lovely lady wife. Hello, Audrey. Nice surprise. <laughs> now, aren't you going to introduce us? Yes, uh, this is Barbara. She's my, um, well, secretary in my office. Yeah, she's nuts about Bat Monroe. And when a ticket unexpectedly came up, she uh, jumped at the chance. <laughs> uh, well, Sydney, why don't we get the ladies a proper drink and then we can uh, discuss business? Would you excuse us? We've got a table. You're welcome to my Campari, Audrey. I haven't touched it. No? I don't blame you. <laughs> it smells like toilet bleach. He may not be wearing a ring, but he is married, you know. Who, Sydney? You know who I mean. He's married to Joan. And they have two children. But I don't expect your sort care much about that. What sort is that, exactly? A good time girl. Out for what she can get from unsuspecting married men. Come on, ladies. Matt Monroe is about to begin. How's your wife, Valentine? Um, she's a bit under the weather, actually, yeah. Hmm. I think I might have caught what she's got. A touch of having the wool pulled over your eyes-itis. It's nice to meet you, Audrey. Sydney. And Valentine, send my commiserations to Joan. Don't ask. And I like your dress. Well, borrowed from work. Turns out I needn't have bothered. Plus, it's about as comfortable as being sewn into a windsock. Bloody nightmare if you need a waz. Well, ladies, is that way. Shout if you need help with the zipper. Hold on to your coat. But soft. Or light from yonder window breaks. Oh, <laughs> you can bugger off and all. Oh, you don't remember me, do you? <clears throat> we met at the first night of that Arthur Askey film you were in. What a revelation. I've not been in any film. Oh, my dear, I'm terribly sorry. I could have sworn you were Sabrina. Well, I am not bloody Sabrina. And you fellas might learn to tell us apart if you ever bothered to look above a woman's neck. Might I buy you a drink by way of apology? You've got to be joking. I never joke. Absolutely no sense of humor. My name is Brian Debenham, and uh, this is my dear wife, Patsy. Oh, I see. You're awfully pretty, aren't you? Right up your street, Brian. Mm. Well, like Sabrina. Oh, she didn't like to hear that. Ooh. And I don't like it when men try to pick me up while their wives are watching. But we're not trying to pick you up for kinky sex. No, my dear. What I've got planned for you is much grubbier <laughs> than that. <laughs> Was it something I said? Everything. For your sake, I say, walk away, just go, walk away and live a life that's full with no regret. Don't look back at me, just try. To forget why build a dream alone at last. We both know what we're here for. <coughs> what are you doing? I'm gonna have what I paid for. <coughs> <coughs> Goodbye, my son. 
My tears will fall now that you're gone. I can't help but cry. But I must go on. I'm sad that I, after searching so long, knew I love you. My business card. He told you it was grubby. Come and see me in the office sometime. There's a lot of opportunity for a girl like you. <laughs> Take a taxi home, darling. The rain plays havoc with a hairpiece. night on the baby sham, was it? How is our old pal, Valentine? Valentine was not a gentleman. I think the word gentleman in gentleman friend is... It's a bit like the word public in public school. Probably should have warned you. Those perfume fellas just want it on a plate. Thought you'd know that. Why, what's the matter? You're not a virgin, are you? Are you? <laughs> Shut up! The point is, you don't look like a virgin, so you should probably expect fellas to, to have a crack. No, Marge, the point is, it's one thing choosing to go with a fella, it's quite another thing when a man thinks it's his for the taking. Right, well... Come on, missus, get your clobber on. We're late for work. Actually, Marge, could you drop the dress back with ladies' fashion? I'm not up to hats today. <sighs> Sorry, Marge, but I've only got enough coppers for my weekly call with my dad. He says patience is a virtue. He's not the one sitting in the freezing cold eating pilchards from a tin. Perfect timing. George! Look who's just dropped by with a lovely bit of tripe. <laughs> Help, Mr. Parker. All right, Aiden. Would you like a cup of Aiden? Oh, I'd love one. I'm absolutely parched. George, where are your manners? Go and make Aiden a nice cup of tea. George? Barbara, it's me. Aidan, what are you doing there? What are you doing there? You've made your point. It's time to stop faffing around. Come on. Please, I need to speak to me dad. Here, here. Hey, give us the phone. Dad? Dad, are you there? Hey, Barbara? Mayday, mayday. Hey, how was Matt Munro? Dad. You all right, love? Um... Remember, if at first you don't succeed, come home and have a... No. Pretend you're happy when you're blue It isn't very hard to do And you'll find happiness without an end Whenever you pretend Remember anyone can dream And nothing's bad as it may seem I don't think we were properly introduced uh, I'm Barbara Parker. 
Why are you here, Barbara Parker? You, you gave me your business card. No, <laughs> I mean, here in London. Tell me all about yourself. Mm? Oh, um, I was born in Blackpool, mm? and I came to London to be someone. Anyone in particular? Are you tired, listless, run down? Do you poop out at parties? Are you unpopular? Then try by to meet a vegeman. Goodness gracious me. <clears throat> Do you not know Lucille Ball? What on earth has dear Lucille got to do with anything? Wonderful legs, of course. But unfortunately, she was forced to make faces in order to pay the rent. No. You, you have something different. <clears throat> you have star quality. <laughs> Would you like an egg? No, thank you. Oh. Um. Are you the agent of all these famous people? Many have sat where you are sitting at uh, some point in their careers. <laughs> and the others, I, uh, I've been up for inspiration. So, let's get cracking. <laughs> we don't want the bloom to go off the rose, do we, uh, Barbara? Any relevant experience? Me dad says I'm good at doing voices. Well, we'll be sure to put that on your curriculum vitae. No experience at all. Not unless you count being Miss Blackpool Bell. Miss Blackpool Bell? What are you talking? That is something I can work with. <laughs> Local beauty queen, our very own Cinderella. I love it. So can I give up my job at Lewis Peters? <clears throat> Well, uh, let's not do anything rash, <laughs> Barbara. Barbara, what did you say your name was? Parker. Barbara Parker. Barbara is ever so slightly provincial, hmm? What do you think of Sophie? Do I know her? No, I mean the name Sophie. Uh, how about uh, Sophie Straw? Huh? It's modern. It's fresh. It's alliterative. It's like Sandy Shaw. Sophie Straw. Sounds like a type of animal feed. Precisely. If even I, a happily married man, deeply in love with his wife, ends up thinking about rolls in the hay with Sophie Straw, <laughs> I imagine what all the unhappily married men will feel like. Rolls in the hay? Well, figuratively speaking. I'll be Sophie, I suppose, if you think it'll help me get a job. Wonderful news. To that end, I'll ask Patsy, my wife, to uh, go out shopping with you for a lovely gingham bikini. Bikini? Mm -hmm. It's coming on winter. Well, you can wear it for your auditions, so that everyone can see your lovely shape. If I wanted to shimmy about in me swimmers, I could have stayed in Blackpool. Are you telling me you actually want to act? Oh, well. Well, uh, we'll send you out on some auditions with words and we'll uh, call it a trial period. A trial period. No bikinis. Yet. Ever. <laughs> oh, Pats, will you give me a toast, please? Darling? Of course, darling. Butter on both sides. I can't sit still. Cooper. I've got news. Oh, I've got news too. Shall I go first or...? you got the sack. Sykes, he told me to give you that letter and tell you not to come back. How did she know about the dress? She saw it. Apparently when they took it out of the bag in ladies' fashion, it was so crispy that it stood up on its own. Did you get in trouble? No. Sykes, he gave a talking to all the girls in perfume, makeup, and fashion about loose morals. Oh, God, this is awful. I know. She didn't bother with us in shoes because apparently we're not at risk. Rude. Well, 
In that case, it's just as well that I got myself a theatrical agent. <laughs> <laughs> It's a brand new farce called Move Over, Madam. Uh, your character is a flighty young debutante whom the male lead, Nigel, is keen to dump. He is, of course, prevented from doing so by his shrewish hag of a wife. Page 23, scene four. And action! For extra penetration, wash your whites in ripples. Mmm, ripples for when things get really filthy. No, Nigel, we can't do it here. Not with your wife upstairs. Stop. Her shape's all wrong for our brand. I'm sorry, not this time, darling. Are you trying something? What? What do you mean, Adam? I mean, that, that, the, the, uh, the accent. Not an accent. It's how I talk. Oh, dear. or just plain wrong. Perhaps our accent is holding us back. I thought kitchen sink drama was all the rage. For angry young men, dear. Nobody wants an angry young woman grumping around the stage, beating her breasts like an orangutan. I can't help feeling that we rather run out of options on the uh, speaking part front. We haven't since she played Viola for Olivia. You know, the part. Go to this address, tell them I sent you. And if you don't get this part, I'm afraid our trial period is over. I'd rather be cleaning toilets. Meryl Charlton from TV Centre about the casting for dining in. What a happy bunny. And a very good morning to you too, Beryl. I'm sorry you feel that way. It's just a silly old comedy playhouse. No money to be made there, darling. Comedy playhouse, comedy shit house. You mean, pardon my French. Comedy playhouse. I'd love to do one of those. <laughs> well, why didn't I think of that, eh? Um, look at this. Sicily is well-spoken, petite, brunette, the varsity educated daughter of a fucking clergyman. Of course, you're perfect casting. Deep breath, deep breath, darling. Shall we loosen your truss? Yes, I spent my whole life trying to help you. was written by Tony Holmes and Bill Gardner. It's directed and produced by Dennis Mahindra. Can you show Marcia out, please? Of course. Can you catch up on all the theatre gossip? I hear there's been much ado about nothing. Over Richard Burton's Hamlet. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Oh, oh. Thomas. Um. Sorry. No, sorry. Uh, uh, yes. I haven't missed it, have I? The audition. Um, I, I just saw uh, Beryl in the corridor and she said to get a wriggle on. Beryl said that? Oh, gosh, I'm so sorry, Miss. Um, sorry, we weren't um, 
expecting anyone else. Uh, my agent definitely arranged for me to meet you at uh, 20 past. Uh, Beryl said to start without her. I'm Sophie Stroll. Ah, uh, Dennis. Dennis Mahindra. Oh, Mr Mahindra! I've listened to every single Awkward Squad. It's the best thing since sausages. Sorry, I, I, I don't even know what that means. Oh, yes. Well, thank you. <laughs> Could you give me just one moment? Um, apparently there's, um, one more young lady for us oh, to receive. Jesus, seriously, I thought we all decided on Marcia Bell. Well, you might have decided on Marcia Bell, Clive, on the basis that you want to fuck her. Oh, that ship's already sailed, actually. We haven't decided, right, Tom? Well, she looks right for the plot. She's a very good classical actress, but is she funny? Uh, no. She doesn't have to be funny. I'm funny. The script's funny in places. Oh, steady on, Clive. You almost give the writers a compliment. Well, in that case, I take it back. Fascinating as this discussion is, can we just hear the young lady read? We've got to be out of this room by 6 p.m. Oh. Well, bring her in. Surely she can't be more wrong for the part than the other mm. 20 we've seen. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Miss Shaw. Uh, please. Abject apologies. Uh, for some stupid reason, I imagine Sicily as the well-educated, upper-class, petite brunette daughter of a vicar. And brunette, honest, under the peroxide. I know I don't look like how you imagined Sicily, but you lot don't look like how I imagined. I thought you'd all be tweedy posh lads with pipes. <laughs> You're Clive, aren't you? Yes, you, um, you've seen me on the stage. Did you catch his Coriolanus? No, I had the vaccine. <laughs> Sorry. And I, well, just, I recognised his voice from the Awkward Squad. Captain Smythe. Described by one critic as having the most irritating voice since Peter Sellers played Blue Bottle. And he's not even putting it on. Mm. Are you Bill or Tony? I'm Bill. That's got to be a first. Usually nobody knows the writers' names until they've read their obituary. <clears throat> uh, chaps, shall we um, push on and let Miss Straw read? Yes, do let's hear her read. What, uh, what have you prepared? Prepared? Well, I didn't really have time. The Awkward Squad was written by Bill Gardner, Tony Holmes, and produced by Dennis Mahindra. Sparky was played by Hank Hector. And oh, Private Privates was played by <laughs> somebody private. <laughs> and oh, Captain Smythe was played by Clive. Richardson! Ah, Beryl, perfect timing. We were just uh, auditioning Sophie. Who? Uh, Sophie Straw. Spoke to her in the corridor. Gather she's on your list. She most certainly is not. We've never met. Sophie, I, I thought you said. Um... Yeah, I'd rather think you've been made a fool of, Dennis. As if we'd ever cast someone like her. Please, let me. Thank you. I got some troubles, but they won't last I'm gonna lay right down here in the grass And pretty soon all my troubles will pass Cause I'm in shoo 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 Sugar town 